Welcome back. It is Friday, May 10th in the NBA. My three best bets are on the way. What's going on, everyone? My name is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Let's hop into a recap from yesterday where our cold streak continued. A one in four day. Let's talk about it. We had Daniel Gafford's over in points. I was about to throw something as he had 10 points, then went to the locker room in the first half. He did deliver. Kyrie Irving, I think that might have been his first game not scoring 10 points in like 25 years. Then the other ones in this Cavs and Celtics game, Really, really, really should not have been a reverse 0-3 game in that one. Darius Garland, 14 points with five minutes left in the third quarter. Nothing. He had Tatum. He had like five or six rebounds in the first quarter. Nothing after that. And then, of course, we had the Donovan Mitchell over in threes. But, of course, we parlayed it with Celtics money line, and they get blown out at home. Just a disappointing one in four day. I'm not in the business to come on here and make excuses for y'all. I got to be better. And so if I'm not better today, we'll do a giveaway. Just like we did in the MLB yesterday, we said if we had a losing day, we'd give away 50 bucks. We're going to do it here today. If we do not go two and one or better today, give away $50 to one random person. All you got to go do is go down below in the comments, drop your best bet, your best pick of the day. If I don't have winning day, I'll go down below, pick one random comment that is a winner and give away 50 bucks to y'all tomorrow morning. But without further ado, I need to be better. We need to get locked in and dominate the rest of the postseason. I really like the three picks we got going today. Never going to do more than two in a single game. Going to try to limit it to just three per day or less than that going forward. First pick of the day is going to be the guy on the thumbnail, a guy we backed in game one and he delivered a winning uh, slip for us. It's Nikola Jokic, the now three-time MVP, over 28 and a half points, minus 120 on BetMGM. Now, I was contemplating backing Jamal Murray in the spot, but Jamal Murray, while he's sure, you could say he has to play better. He's been absolutely clamped up by the Timberwolves defense, and I don't see things getting a lot better for him today. However, for Jokic, he's the best player in the world. And I'm going to trust that he bounces back here in a must-win game. You can't go down 0-3. Everyone knows the stats. No team, no team has ever come back down 0-3. Nuggets are going to play like that today. And like I said, we should see Rudy Gobert back in the lineup just like he was in game one. And in that game one, we backed Jokic in that game with Gobert active. You saw Jokic, 32 points, but he left a lot of meat on the bone. He did not shoot the ball well. 11 for 25, 2 of 9 from 3. And you look at him on the season, shot 58%. So he was below 50%, I think 41 or 42% in that game. That's well below what we've seen out of Nikola Jokic. Now, sure, we got to give credit to the Timberwolves defense. They have been one of the best, if not the best unit in basketball all season long. And they're going to make life difficult on Jokic and everyone else on the Nuggets to score the basketball. This is still Jokic, and they really want to turn Jokic into a scorer. Now, if you flash forward to game two, Gobert was out, and we saw Jokic really struggle. Only 13 field goal attempts. I mean, heck, their whole team struggled. And so while, sure, they probably they, they would go back to that, but Rudy Gobert is going to be in there. He's going to be in drop coverage, and they're going to make uh, they're going to make Nikola Jokic score. And I anticipate him getting back to the 20 field goal attempts line. I mean, if he doesn't shoot 20 times, I'd be shocked tonight. They need him to be a scorer and score tonight. That's what the Timberwolves do. Is they like, yo, Jokic, you want to go beat us? Go score on your own. But when they didn't have a Rudy Gobert down there, they were kind of doubling Jokic and forcing someone else to knock down some shots against them. Hence why it was just a disaster. But with Rudy Gobert in there, they're not going to double Jokic in the post. Or we should see Jokic go to work. Jokic, 20 field goal attempts, 34 games a season, averaged 31.9 points per game in those games, scoring over this line in 25 of 34, 74%. That included five games against the Timberwolves with 20 shots this season, 25, 35, 32, 41, and 32 points. Look, basically your season's on the line. I'm going to roll with Nikola Jokic. He should get a ton of minutes. I don't see the Nuggets getting blown out here. I don't see the Timberwolves blowing out the Nuggets. This should be a tight game, and I think it's because Jokic is going to have to carry this team on his back. Look, I'm willing to go down in a cold streak, go back to the best player in the NBA. I really like his over 28 and a half points. Is it a high line? Yes. Are the Timberwolves a great defense? Yes, but I think they turn him into a scorer just like they have done when Gobert has been active. Gobert should not miss tonight as obviously he missed last game due to personal reasons. Should be back tonight after several days off that was what was the last game on monday i think we'll see Jokic have a dominant day 30 points don't know if the nuggets win but i don't really care i need 30 out of Jokic, and i think he gets that give me his over 28 and a half points now my second and third pick we're going to go to the earlier game knicks versus pacers obviously the pacers are in a must win spot as well as they are down 0-2 and they're seven point favorites so i do anticipate them winning today but i think it's going to be a large in part due to an, an increased role in one of their 
role players. And it's a guy that's burned us a couple times this postseason. TJ McConnell, over 16 and a half points plus assists, minus 118 on DraftKings. Now, if you need an individual line, I was just going to take the over in points at 10 and a half, but I think there's a lot of assist opportunities here for McConnell, especially at home where the guys are going to knock down more shots, the role players, that is. And I think McConnell's going to continue to play a big role. Now, obviously, he has burned us a few times in the postseason. We took us over a few times in that Milwaukee Bucks series. Obviously, he did not come through, and once you know the next game, he did. However, that was a much different series, and that was also a series in which McConnell's second unit didn't play well. If you looked at his plus minus in those games, he was a minus 10, minus th five, minus 13, things of that nature. So when his unit came on, they struggled. However, that has not been the case so far in this series. In game one, we saw McConnell 18 points on nine of 16 field goal attempts in 22 minutes. Also three assists on seven potential assists. In game two, less of a scoring role, 10 points on five of nine shooting, but still played 22, 23 minutes, and he had 12 assists on 14 potential assists. I mean, like I said, McConnell, a plus 19 in the series. I mean, this is despite the Pacers being, you know, down, and I think they're minus 13 overall as a team, but when McConnell's been on the floor, their net rating has been a way up, and they've been a better basketball team. And while, sure, maybe he doesn't close the game, and maybe he's not in there for their closing lineup, but he still needs to play at least what he's been playing recently. And there's a chance they get an uptick in minutes for McConnell tonight. He's been one of their best players, especially off that bench. And McConnell is over this line in eight straight games with 20 to 25 minutes. And that's with Halliburton and Siakam active. I don't want to count games where Halley did not play. But look, he's been really consistent. I really think he can get us over this points plus assist line. I really don't think he plays, you know, 30 minutes tonight. But if he consistently plays 20 to 25, I really think we're in for a good spot for TJ McConnell to hit this over. Obviously, there's a chance he plays even more than that because he's been playing really well. There's a chance that they are not blowing out the Knicks, but up a good amount in the in the fourth quarter. And Halliburton, who's been obviously dealing with back spasms, he maybe doesn't play as many minutes in the fourth because they're trying to you know get him healthier and healthier for the rest of the series. Could happen. Or we just see them play him even more minutes because they're like, yo, you've been really well. We need you to close in this lineup because our, our defense, our offense has been struggling to close games, and especially in the end versus this Knicks team. So I really like TJ McConnell. I think we see another 20 minutes and maybe 10 field goal attempts from him but he should have the ball in his hands a good amount and if he plays more minutes even better and if Halliburton well I just don't see him going off once again I really like TJ McConnell over 16 and a half points plus assist I will let him burn me one one final time before I say sayonara to Mr. TJ McConnell but I really like the spot for him third and final play of the day goes hand in hand with TJ McConnell's up uprise and his elevation in minutes hopefully tonight because it's an under and I know we've had bad luck on under so if you want a guy that's probably going to shoot 80% from the field, this is going to be your guy. Andrew Nemhard of the Indiana Pacers, under 17 and a half points, rebalance and assist, PRAs, minus 125 on bet MGF. I like this at 16 and a half. I think both go hand in hand. I don't mind his under in points, but I really think there's a good edge on the rebounds and the assists. And I'll talk about why for each of those statistics. Now, I do want to point out, I was, I was going to put this out yesterday. I did see my friend Prop Bomb on Twitter on this one, so shout out him. I'll use some of the stats that he talked about. I really like this one. Also, Prop Bomb has a lot better luck on unders than I do. He gets guys shooting 10%, or his my guys always shoot 80%. So if this one's chalked, I'm telling him I'm sorry. But I really think this is a good spot. I'm not just backing it because he's on it. I really thought it was a good spot, and then I saw him post it. I really like Nemhard's under here. Let's talk about why. Now, in game one, Nemhard went under on the hook, had 11 points, two reps, four assists, 17 PRAs on the dot on four of 10 shooting. Game two, 15 points on and four assists, 19 PRAs on seven of nine shooting. Feels like it took the under there where you shot 75, 80%. Now, if you look at his minutes, you know, slight down crease, 29 in game one, 27 in game two. In a larger part, I could see that go down even more today as teacher McConnell has played really well. Could we see McConnell play a couple extra minutes? Those typically come at the demise of a guy like Andrew Nemhard, who is out there mostly for defensive reasons. Now, if that happens, obviously we'd kill two birds with one stone. TJ McConnell probably playing better. Nemhard not getting as many minutes. But at the same time, Andrew is out there for playing defense. That's mostly what he's tasked with. He's going to have to go out there and guard Jalen Brunson. Now, last game, Brunson missed the majority of the first half. So Nemhard was kind of running around. They didn't really know what to do with him. But still, this is coming in here. He's going to probably guard Jalen Brunson. So not only do you have foul trouble, or chance there you're also not down low to grab rebounds and number two well if that happens maybe he gets into foul trouble maybe he just doesn't shoot well maybe he sees some regression from the field i just don't see a lot of minutes coming his way like i said last series against the bucks much better rotation much better matchup for him this has not been the greatest matchup for him against the knicks and m is under in 16 of 23 games 70 percent when he plays 25 22 to 30 minutes 
with Halliburton and Pascal Siakam active. Obviously, if it plays more than 30 minutes, then I probably just had a bad read here, but there is a chance he plays less than that, but I anticipate him playing somewhere in the 25 to 27 minutes, but that's kind of what he's been playing in games one and two, and so I think at the end of the day, this is a Knicks team that now is going to probably run a lot of big men. You're probably going to see Precious Atua and Isaiah Hartenstein play a lot of minutes. Probably that's the starting lineup. They don't like Alec Burks a ton. OJ Nanobi's out for this game, so there's not as much need for, you know, guard slash wing depth as for this pace team, whereas there is for, you know, bigger wings like Obi Toppin and Isaiah Jackson's of the world, whereas Andrew Nembhard is not really needed, I think, as much tonight as the Knicks probably go more towards a bigger lineup than a smaller lineup where they're putting like McBride or Burks in there. That's just my personal opinion as a Knicks fan. I think they go towards more of a Precious and Isaiah Hartenstein matchup than they do to maybe Trey McBride and running like a Dante DiVincenzo or Josh Hart at the four. That just doesn't seem like a recipe for success, especially as one of them probably has to guard Pascal Siakam. So I imagine they put up the size of Precious out there, and at doing that, you probably get more size from the Pacers, limited minutes for Nemhard. I really like his under at 17 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Obviously, you could just take the points, but like I said, he's going to guard Brunson, so the rebounds probably aren't going to be there at zero in game two. But also, he converted on four of his potential assists. He went four or four in that game two as well. So Look, I'm going to fade him. Obviously, there's a chance he doesn't get as many minutes. Say maybe he plays 22 to 25 minutes. Maybe he even gets benched. Probably unlikely, but that would be awesome. Bench him for Cheetah McConnell. I love that, but I really think this is a good spot to fade him. So I'll take his under in PRAs. McConnell's over in points plus assists, and Jokic is over in points. As I said at the top of the video, if I do not have at least a two-in-one day in those picks, I will give away 50 bucks to one random person that goes down below, comments your best bet, and if it hits... Maybe you're going to have a chance of winning some money. And not only will your pick hit, so you would have won money there, you might have a chance of winning some money tomorrow. But hopefully that's not the case, as I will go 2-1 and one or 3-0 and oh today, and we get back on track to what we're used to doing, which is winning and dominating the NBA season. Playoffs were started off hot, been really cold the last four or five days. Let's turn that around. Let's get back in the lab, and let's go 3-0 and oh today. Simple as that. I'll see you guys back in the next one. It's Austin. Signing out. Peace.